I want to thank the thousands of people the world over who uh, clicked on YouTube to view the C14 is a small portable scope. Today I would like to answer a few comments that have come in and demonstrate a new technique which showed to me that my previous techniques were wrong. Um, however, I will address first a couple of complaints that came in from people. One was, how am I going to do this in the dark? You're astronomers! You're supposed to be able to do things in the dark. They have an engineering solution for this. It's called these little headlamps that you buy at Lowe's. See that? And they got red, and they got white. So you put that on your head and you can work in the dark. Other people say, oh, how could I do this in the winter? Well, I do everything here in the winter. I have no further comment on that. Um, other people said, but what about when the infirmities of age have finally brought me low and I am in a nursing home sucking on my gums, eating only oatmeal for breakfast and ice cream for dinner? For these people, we have another small portable scope. Okay. So anyhow, in the meantime, what I would like to say is that the objective of this exercise is to delay the transition from this to that as long as possible. And here I have to acknowledge that some of you girly men who wrote in are actually smarter than me. Some of you are engineering geniuses because after all, when you hoist the scope up like this and you're carrying this thing, you've got all this leverage on your shoulders and some people get hurt. So how do we use the natural engineering forces in this setup for a smooth and easy dismount and for a mounting uh, process? That's what I'm gonna show you in the next couple of minutes. Here we are. This is what you might have at the end of the night. Usually I have a refractor, I would take that off. You take off the diagonal, you take off all these things. You've got the corrector cover on. And now you take your observing chair and you swing it up right next to the mount. And you pull the mount down like this. And you let the tube come to rest right here. And now you're going to tighten the clutch is a little bit. You might do it a little bit differently on a G11, but this is a very stable situation you got over here on the chair. The chair is designed to hold 300 pound people. You take off the counterweights. And you've tightened the clutches because, at least on this particular astrophysics design, there's still some weight left to this um, counterweight shaft. And now, Without having any pressure on my back whatsoever, I loosen the saddle and I pull the scope free and I have dismounted the C14. And I wish I'd been smart enough to invent that trick, but the clean and jerk technique which I demonstrated in my previous video um, has worked for me. Anyhow, this is clearly a more effortless, effortless way of moving the telescope around. Now let's do it in reverse. We bring the scope up here. And now all the maneuvering, all the weight is being held by the chair. So we have a little bit of fine maneuvering to do here. You want to make sure that the clamps are all the way out. And so now we're going to insert the edge along here into the Cassidy saddle. And it's really just a question of getting, getting a good fit. And that's pretty much it when it's flat like that. Then you tighten it down. And if you've worked with these things a while, you can tell when you've got a good cinch. So now it's in there, you can tell. It's being held on this chair by the mount, 
It's very secure. You come over here. You put on the counterweights. And the stop washer if you're not doing a video. But if this were a real setup, I would still have an additional counterweight to add for the refractor. But I don't need that right now. The point of this is, is that we're letting gravity work for us. And there it is. And again, I've come up a little bit too high here. I've got a couple marks here. These marks, the R of Robin Cassidy, should be uh, between these two marks here. So, but again, I can let gravity uh, allow this to slide down. I can make the adjustment. So, in all of this process, we are using the natural engineering properties of the mount to reduce stress. And therefore, we can see that people who are having a hard time hoisting fork mounts and that kind of thing should seriously consider this alternative because you put hardly any stress on your back while you're doing the mounting and dismounting. Um, or if you prefer, if you have the strength and you uh, want to go faster, then you can use the techniques in my previous video. Now, if you have a Lasmondi G11, which I haven't set up tonight, um, it's a very similar process. <clears throat> you would turn this this way. It's not quite as elegant as the Ca Cassidy thing, but the point is, it's the Cassidy uh, system, but the point is you've got the G11 mount, the G11 head, which needs to be threaded. It's in approximately this angle, instead of straight up, straight down. And now, if this were a G11, you could hold the telescope pretty much like this. You could support it here if it got a little bit hard, and you could thread it that way. Anyhow, this is the basic uh, technique for getting a C-14 up on a German equatorial mount. And um, I think, therefore, we have shown that you don't have to put a lot of back effort into it. And this concludes and proves my thesis that the C-14 is a small, portable scope. So what's it going to be? The C-14 or one of these things?